good afternoon adventurers hello there we are in london we've officially made it to the uk we are here so you guys know that we have done quite a bit of rving around the united states we've been all over the place but we've always wanted to take out an rv in a different country so that's what we're freaking doing you guys y'all we bought a new rv in england you always catch me off guard with that one we didn't <laughs> we, Why? Did, we I didn't buy it scream shrilly in your ear yeah. yeah we did not buy this we're renting it but yeah so we decided to hire a two birth caravan for holiday so we can drive down the carriageway and pitch up at the nearest park <laughs> and that's just a bunch of fancy british words for we're going on an rv road trip Where the heck is the steering wheel? Well, I made my first mistake. We're in the UK, so got to drive on the right side. <laughs> right side of the car, left side of the road. I really knew that I was supposed to get on that one. That was just a joke. It was, but y'all, <laughs> driving on the right side of the car, on the left side of the road, manuals on the left side. It's gonna be great. Yeah. All right, let's actually switch and see if I can drive this dang thing. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that we learned how to drive a manual on such a piece of car because <laughs> i think it's gonna make this a cakewalk hopefully but it's also very big i'm on tiny british roads uh and i'm just stalling right now because i'm a little nervous sadly this was the smallest caravan they had at yeah. seven meters which is about the size of clementine but here's the plan we are doing the about two hour drive out to bath which is in the southwestern part of uh england we're gonna pitch up at a little caravan park there for the night and then uh, i think we'll just kind of get acquainted with the rv spend one night in it and then we're gonna show you guys around once we figure out where everything is in this thing <laughs> it's pretty freaking cool so far i'm kind of impressed it's not bad no it's not bad at all but it's gonna be fun to show you all the differences between caravanning in the u.s and caravanning in england yeah. sadly the sun goes down at like 3 30 right now it's currently 1 30. yeah and i don't really want to be driving in the dark until no. i'm really used to this thing so, so nothing to it but to do it i guess <laughs> Remember, the shifter is on the left. <laughs> this is already freaking weird. <laughs> All right, third gear works. All right, we're cruising. Yay. Keep left, keep left, keep left. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna remember. That's my mantra for this trip. <laughs> First roundabout <laughs> in the books. <laughs> So good you guys we made it to the highway and it's pretty much a straight shot to the campsite from here man this is going to take some freaking getting used to i'm first off shifting with my left hand and then driving in the right side of the vehicle it's like i i keep veering off to the left for some reason i have to be like uh stay right stay right <laughs> when we get into the towns and the roundabouts i'm just like stay left stay left stay left <laughs> so i don't actually accidentally turn into the right lane <laughs> On the plus side, this thing drives really nice. It shifts so much better than Ruby. And you guys know that's the one we learned to drive a manual on. And that thing is freaking rough and clunky. So this is like butter compared to that. Now get the thing out of my face so I can freaking <laughs> yes, pay attention. Please concentrate with <laughs> all of your body. Yeah. <laughs> well, we turned down a super narrow road and I'm not gonna lie, it is a little nerve wracking. Our rig is basically the exact same size of the lane that we're in right now. I'm just kind of hoping someone doesn't smack into our mirrors or something. Yeah, it seems like all of their vehicles are just more narrow in general. Even their semi trucks seem to be a lot skinnier and I guess they just build them taller. Well, y'all, we made it. And luckily there is a pub within walking distance of our RV park and we're having a much deserved drink. <laughs> but we have made it to Bath and we're actually staying at the Bath Waterside and Marina RV Park, which is only about two miles outside of the city center. So it's a freaking sweet location, you guys. And look at the deliciousness we ordered at the pub. This is like a turkey dinner. So you have Yorkshire pudding here. You've got some mash right there. You've got some greens. Of course, a bunch of turkey and gravy. Oh, <laughs> we got it all, baby. This is one of our favorite parts of traveling to the UK is just exploring all the awesome little pubs. This one just has like really rich wood all over the place and this back room is decorated so nice it's freaking sweet stay tuned for our little tour of our rv we still haven't really gotten to know it very well because we parked it and then came directly to the pub <laughs> tomorrow we will get more acquainted that's all that's all good 
Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Isn't our little RV so adorable? Check this thing out. It's funny because it's really not that small, but it just looks tiny. Yeah, it's actually about the length of Clementine, our RV back in the States. But if you put this next to Clementine, Clementine would look so much bigger. It's like a huge box compared to this. Yeah, I feel like she's probably at least a foot wider yeah. and probably two feet taller. And because of those extra added dimensions, Clementine wouldn't last a minute on the roads here in England. This thing barely yeah. fits, you guys, it's crazy. But we did have a pretty decent little night's sleep in the RV. Unfortunately, the bed situation is really not that good. We'll show you that in a minute, yeah. but it leaves a little bit to be desired. Yeah. And what's funny is that we found that a lot of the RV parks here in England, they're a little bit more bare bones than they are in the US. Like for example, there's just a little power pedestal over there. That's all you get. You don't get any kind of sewer. They all use chemical toilets instead. And uh, you don't get any kind of water connection. I, I think some of them have that, but most of them I don't think have sewer like all over the country. We were actually surprised to find that these spots had concrete. A lot of them are just big grassy knolls yeah. that you park in. Also one big difference is just the type of RVs. There's a bunch around that are pretty much the same dimensions as ours. Then there's a style that has this really fun over cab bunk that kind of bumps out. They're all so cute. They're mostly just oversized vans if yeah. we're being honest. Basically class B plus I think is what yeah. you would call them. As you can see it's very cold and dreary out here. It hasn't started raining yet but I think that means it's time to take y'all inside and yeah. go on a little tour. Welcome to our little motorhome called Alice. First thing you notice when you walk in is that this rig is surprisingly spacious for how compact it looks on the outside. We love when you have room for two people to pass like this. Oh yeah. That's Check it out. I can just stroll on by you. You can stroll on by me. Exactly. We've actually seen this kind of layout in a lot of RVs and we actually really like it. Because it has so many different areas, it feels so much bigger and more spacious and like almost homey. Ah, I thought I was going to do a really fast spin around. Get on over here. I'll you watch your feet. Ah. Wait, we got it. There we go. Swiveling Nailed captain's it. chairs. That's what we're trying to get at here. We really love when the captain's chair swivels because you just gain all this extra hangout space. They're a little high up because they swivel, but they are very comfy. Right behind the cockpit is the like hangout dining chill area. Check this out. They've got another swivel. This table. Oh, it's kind of dirty. <laughs> you can fit one, two, three, four, like six people in here. So you can bring all your friends, all your babies all your dogs, whatever you got. Pick up random hitchhikers on the road. Yeah, whatever you're into, man. This table collapses somehow, but the question is, can Allison figure it out? Can I do it? Does this come out? And then this goes, these things do something. I know, it comes out somehow. So it comes off of there. It slides out, out of this bottom one. Boom. You got Boom. there, you did it. Yeah. Oh, I see. So then we got like a... Uh, yeah, and then what I happens? think this... Does this come over, off? over and that comes down. Does this one come over there somehow? Maybe this one Oh yeah, there you go. Does it go over here? <laughs> Good thing we don't have any guests because yeah. they would not want to sleep in whatever this is. So there's a bed up here. I think you just, whoa, check that out. Woohoo! What is it, just lock in place? I that is so. actually pretty freaking nifty. I actually really like that it's not powered, so you don't have to worry about the mechanism breaking or anything like that. When they're powered, I always get so scared that in the middle of the night, <laughs> something's gonna malfunction, it's gonna suck us up and smush us. Oh, there's a spider! Ah! Where? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he's a big one. I was gonna get up there, but now I'm not gonna do it. This is spider's bed now. We're too lazy to get the ladder out from the basement <laughs> compartment. <laughs> I can do it! Get on up there now. I well, don't get your stuff all over my jacket. What are you doing? Is this how you do <laughs> it? Money shot! Thumbnail. <laughs> that shot reminded me of that comment that one guy made like years ago. There was some shot where Allison did something like that and he said, man, Allison looking like a snack. <laughs> I still don't understand what that means. I don't think I, oh, ah, spider's gone, he's moving. Let's have a truce, you just stay over there. <gasps> no, don't do it. Well, what I was gonna say is, it's got this cool net that you can just strap in up here so you don't have to worry about rolling off or your kids will, ah! No! <laughs> and then when you are done. <laughs> this isn't working out very well. And, and then when you're done. <laughs> oh, right, do you why? Oh, and then when you're done, you easily push it right on back up. But it's actually kind of cool how the cabinetry is all built into the bottom of this bed. So it just kind of slides down in its little slot. Yeah. It actually works really well. 
So before we continue on with the rest of the tour of this rig, we have something very serious that we need to discuss, and that's privacy, security, and freedom. But seriously, we do want to give a huge shout out and a thanks to IP Vanish for sponsoring today's video. Since we travel a lot, we are constantly on strange Wi-Fi networks, but with IP Vanish, we can make sure that our connection is always encrypted and that no one can spy on what we're doing. You can also use it to get around geographically censored content, so when we're traveling out of the country and we need to watch our stories, you better believe we've got our VPN on. But most importantly, having a VPN just makes your internet activity more anonymous by masking your IP address and keeping you from being tracked. So instead of browsing the internet like this, you could browse the internet like this. Woo! I'm vanishing. I'm, in, I'm encrypted now. Allison's over here laughing at me. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> this is quite a show you're putting on for me. You're welcome. You should be paying me for this. You can try IP Vanish for 30 days risk-free and save a ton on their yearly plan. Just head to ipvanish.com slash endless adventure. Now that the RV has been officially secured, Back to the tour. All right, behind the dining area is the kitchen. It's small, but fairly well equi equipped. Let's get this video back on track, all right, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, my heart's still going from the spider stuff. There are three burners in here, and it's all run off the propane, so nice flames come out of here. We found it funny, they don't actually have a vent for this. Like pretty much any RV in the US is gonna have a vent right here, but they don't have one. There's no oven or anything, so it's only stove top cooking, but they do have a pretty large fridge. I'm not going to open it right now though, because you guys, it smells like dead fish in there. <laughs> uh, we don't have anything in it anyway, but it is neat that it can run off of the power, the battery, or it can run off propane. It may smell like fish right now, but it works really well. It does. <laughs> I also really love the lighting in this rig. There's a lot of like undermounted lighting so you can't actually see it. It just kind of illuminates random walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really classy. They have the tiniest little round sink in the land, but you know, it'll get the job done. Probably not our favorite RV sink style. I mean, we like, even if it's gonna be shallow, we like it to have the two separate compartments, but preferably two compartments and very deep. One thing I absolutely love that I have never seen before is the way that the drawers and cabinets open. There's this little latch back here. You push up and it opens it and it unlocks it all in there right where your fingers would go. So it's really like organic feeling to yeah. open everything. If we ever built a rig again, I'd probably do uh, door latches like this because I feel like it's the most usable one I've ever seen. Yeah. Next up is the bedroom. Now it's looking like a snack. I did another scene like this in some video when we were taking that ferry and somebody actually did a little drawing of me literally sitting there like this. <laughs> they caught my like underwear line and everything, man. <laughs> But this is probably one of our favorite bedroom layouts ever in an RV because you hop in here and it's like your own little nook. It actually feels like a little bedroom. And there's plenty of room here for two people to sleep. Confirmed, last night. Although, look at this bed, you guys. This is what it is. It's just this like hard leather, really automotive type of padding. It's really not very good. It's very squeaky. No, and I don't know why they wouldn't just put a real mattress in here like we have in our RV. This RV does very well with the storage. You can see there's storage all up here. So they're really maximizing all that dead space. But if you need even more storage, there is actually heaps of storage right down here. Boom. Can I do it from here? Does this work? Uh, Check it out. Whoa, yeah. this is huge. So you can get into the basement area through the bed. Wow, Clementine <laughs> needed something like this. If we ever did it again, we would try to engineer some kind of space like this. And look, the little piston arm. Whoa, Whoa. I didn't break it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, privacy curtain. <laughs> Check that out. Woo. Buzz off, I'm taking a little nap. It's starting to rain outside, you guys. It's really peaceful. <laughs> So you guys saw the kitchen, the bedroom, and last but not least, we have a full on bathroom. It's really long and spacious. I mean, there is a whole freaking shower in here. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's a whole shower and it's not on top of the toilet. That's pretty spacious for such a small RV. Yeah. And then you actually have room to kind of walk around in here. So this is the infamous cassette toilet. We were not very familiar with this thing. We're still kind of unfamiliar with it, but basically, it, you do your business in there, you kind of open this slot there, and it goes down in there. That's kind of how you flush it. So yeah. there's a little button back here that flushes it. So that all goes down into this little tank down here, and then you can access it from the outside. So when we show you guys kind of the outside, we'll have to show you how this works. It's very strange. There's no tube to hook up if you're staying for a long time. You just yeah. always have to disconnect it and dump it, which is kind of a bummer. They have a little corner sink area over here, and this is actually a bigger sink than the kitchen has. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this. <laughs> Got a little air in the line. 
Maybe the only thing I don't like about this bathroom though is that the mirror starts at my forehead level. I can't yeah. see myself in it. So this is what she looks like looking in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be up on my tippy toes to kind see ridiculous. anything. So if I look bad today, that's why I couldn't see in the mirror. You never look bad, kid. Oh, thanks, darling. One really cool feature in this front cab is that they have these built-in blinds here. This is something I really wish we had on our RV back in the US. So you could black out this whole thing really easily. And then there are some on the side here that, and yeah, well, I don't know if I'm using it right, but how does this work? That one's pretty broken. All right, it's a little broken, but it works. Voila. Up here at the front, there's actually a bunch of little cubbies here. There's a couple speakers that link up to the multimedia system up here. But what's really cool is that there's a little like skylight thing here. The rain actually stopped for a second, so I'm gonna give it a try. Woo! Check that out. Haha, -ha, that's pretty cool. So this mechanism here is the same thing that we have on our travel trailer back home. And then when you're done, you close it like that, latch it up, and Bob's your uncle. It's another British phrase for y'all. <laughs> is Fanny your aunt? Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. If you don't know what that means, ask the people in the comments, I guess. <laughs> Ugh, I got some piston goo on me. Gross. Oh God. Ugh. So this little thing up here, believe it or not, is the control panel. Y'all, this is unlike any we have ever seen in the US. So this little knob, if you turn it to the right, this controls your pump. Then if you keep going, it tells you how much gray water is in your tank, how much fresh water is in there. It goes over here and tells you your battery, your auxiliary battery, and then it shows you if you're charging or not. Since we're in merry old England, there is no AC in this RV. I don't think any of the rigs really usually come with AC. Instead, they just have these little classic skylights that uh, you can use to get some ventilation. And then of course, propane powered heat. Yeah, it's interesting. They don't even have fans in here, not even in the bathroom. No fans anywhere, just keep everything in here. Well, y'all, the rain has let up a little bit. Hopefully it stays that way. We are, we've got big plan, plan, shoot. We want to go into town. Oh, that's what you're trying to say. We've got big, <laughs> big plans in town. Yeah, we are trying to go into town later. <laughs> I find this door so funny. Like it looks like it belongs on a spaceship or something. Like, what is this? <laughs> I do not understand. It doesn't match anything else inside. What is this bar even for? I don't know, just to be hulked off. It's like ripping to pieces already. So this is the little basement storage area under our back bed. It's just so big. You can put anything down in here. Y'all, everything on this rig and in England is like the states but just enough different that it's like bizarro world <laughs> yeah i mean these are the propane tanks which are i mean they're pretty similar to ours but also 100 percent different <laughs> yeah they just wouldn't quite look like this in the u.s and the way they strap them down is different their little connectors here are all slightly different everything's just the same but different same but different so this is the bottom of that cassette toilet so i think saying you kind of oh ow Okay, so it should come out like this. Ooh, oops. There's a little <laughs> water. Right. But so basically this gets filled up with all, all of your byproducts. <laughs> and then uh, I guess you dump it out. It's got wheels on it so you can tote it around. So all these RV here, if I'm not mistaken, are gonna have a toilet like this. This is very yeah. common here. But there's a drop station over there for chemical toilets where you can dump this. Um, but yeah, that's how they do it. They fill this little thing up, they tote it over there and dump it. It'll be much harder to do a permanent stay because in the US, you'll have a big pipe, you know, going into the sewer. Yeah, so you never have to leave or worry about it. It just is constantly being removed. I imagine it gets pretty smelly and stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of a bummer, but- It works though. It works. Another little difference, all these little latches on these things are, well, this one's broken, but yeah. they're all slightly different from what you'd find in the US. So this is how you fill your water. You open this, we've got a hose to fill it with. But as we said, there's no fresh water at your site so you'd have to drive somewhere to fill this yeah so in the u.s you'll have a nozzle where you plug in it actually would be kind of over here yeah you plug it on the the city water and then you get just regular city water like it's a house also another thing they were like oh if your gray gets filled you open it here and i was like where's the hose to drain that they don't have that it's just this little tube one of these it just free flows out yeah so you drive over basically any drain and this is your little gray tube and you just open it up and dump it. I mean, if you did that in the States, I feel like people would try to like report you or something, even if you're just dumping gray water. Yeah, you might get fined or something, but I mean, it makes sense. It's just like soapy water at worst, right? Also, there's a sensor on this tank and if it gets too cold, instead of letting everything freeze, 
it automatically just dumps the tank so yeah. that it can't ever freeze. We would basically have just a tank warmer or, you know, you keep it on the interior so it stays warm, but you wouldn't yeah. do anything like that. So I just keep waiting. We're going to wake up one of these mornings and have no water because it's going to have all <laughs> been evacuated. Plus, I just love the shape of this tank. Like, what's even going on here? <laughs> Talk about some custom design. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and of course, you got your little power outlet here. I think this is like a 16 amp adapter, but completely different than anything we've ever used before, but it works the same. You just plug it in here, plug it into the pedestal and Bob's your uncle. And Fanny again is your aunt. We were kind of bummed with how dirty the rig was. I mean, when they gave it to us, it's just kind of like caked in dirt. They didn't even attempt to wash it off. But you see all these scrape marks? Guess what that's from? <laughs> the edges of the roads always have a bunch of brush on them and they just scrape along the side while you're driving. Yeah. Y'all, we just hopped a car to go to the downtown area of Bath. Man, this is freaking charming. Like, look at this, you guys. This is like classic England vibes. I hope you guys enjoyed coming around our quirky little camper. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a pretty quick trip, but uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna pack in as much as we can in classic endless adventure style. So stay tuned. Plus, doesn't she just look adorable? <laughs> it's winter time, y'all. We were just in Singapore and it was so hot. And now we're in a winter wonderland. Probably Minus the snow. Snowing instead of raining, yes. Okay. Goodbye, adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>